want to know the best way to plan your day? Don't do easy things first. Don't do hard things first. Do first things first. And until your first thing is done, everything else is a distraction. Welcome to the Wisdom Inspired Talks podcast. Thank you for joining me today. I am Yomi Akipelu, your wisdom coach, speaker, teacher, and author of Blow the Cup of Your Capability and other books. In this video, we will learn from the wisdom of wise men and women from ancient and contemporary time. Let's dive right in. Today, we'll be speaking about planning, preparation, and organization. First, a quote Alan Lakin said, Planning is bringing the future into the present so that we can do something about it now. What a great quote. First a story. A university student sent this email to his mom at the end of term. Dropped out of uni. Coming home tomorrow. Prepare dad. The email he got back said, Dad prepared. Prepare yourself. A student once asked his master, you talk about peace, but you teach me to fight. Why? His master said, it is better to be a warrior in a garden than a gardener in a war. The moral is, be prepared. If you fail to plan, you plan to fail. Jim Rohn once said, you can't get rid of January by tearing it off the calendar. Instead, you've got to learn to prepare for it, to handle it. If we don't prepare or plan our lives, chaos will reign. To borrow the words of author Chino Achebe, things will fall apart if we don't prepare or plan our lives. The center will not hold and anarchy will be on the loose in our world. So we've got to prepare. Life is mostly about preparation, to be honest. School is preparation for life. Studying is preparation for the examination. We go the direction we face and we face the direction we design and prepare. Our direction determines our destination. We cannot change destination just like that, but today we can change our direction. Just a little change of direction today will make a massive difference in five years time. It will not take much to change direction today. Just a few decisions in discipline. Eating healthy, maybe an apple a day, a little bit of exercise, spending a little time in prayer and meditation, learning new things, reading, setting goals, taking action, saving a little, avoiding debt. All these little changes in direction can massively affect where we arrive in five years time. It's only a small journey in a new direction. These are ways, all these little ways are ways we can prepare ourselves for a greater future. Psychologists have rightly observed that when one is truly ready and prepared for a thing, it puts in its appearance. You see, time and change cannot be stopped, but they can be controlled by planning and preparation. Strategic planning is a crucial key to success. A good plan is a roadmap. It shows the best way to get to a desired destination. We plan for failure by not planning for success. We plan for poverty by not planning to be wealthy. A friend of mine once said, I will not allow somebody else's lack of a plan become my emergency. Planning is the best way to conserve energy and preserve waste of time and resources. 
Planning is a step-by-step -step approach to accomplishing a set goal or task. It is a process of action or a set of activities designed to accomplish a dream. The greatest protection against wasted time is planning. You see, your plan shows your time how you are going to spend it, just like a budget tells your money how it's going to be sent on your errands. Paul Mayer once said, productivity is never an accident. It is always the result of a commitment to excellence, intelligent planning, and focused effort. Even the biggest tasks can be broken down into small pieces that are manageable. Your life goal can be broken into bite-sized chunks that are not so difficult to achieve. First, you need to decide what you want to accomplish and then walk back from there to where you are now. When you've decided on that, then seek someone who is doing what you want to do and learn from them. When you do this, one thing will lead to another and doors will begin to open for you. Preparation is planning ahead. Preparation causes you to be at ease. It prevents pressure. You see, when I'm well prepared for a task, like an exam or giving a talk or speech or training, I feel minimal stress, but great excitement. But whenever I'm not prepared, I feel stressed out. Good organization and good preparation diminishes stress. Therefore, whatever it is you are hoping for and expecting, it is important to be prepared for it. How can you say one day I will do this or that, but do nothing to prepare or put yourself in the position to be able to receive it now? Be ready for tomorrow by doing all you must do today. Being organized gives you a sense of power, of control. The number one time waster for most people is looking for things that they have lost or misplaced. I read that when a dove returns to his nest, it will land in that nest if the nest is out of order. So we can learn from the dove. Doing first things first and prioritizing the most important things help us to live a more productive life. You might have seen the illustration about putting golf balls into a jar, then putting some small pebbles in the jar, then some sand into the jar, and then water in the jar. All this could only fit into that jar because of the order in which the objects were placed. Put the sand or water into the jar first. Nothing else will fit in. So the jar had to be filled first with the golf balls, then the smaller stones and pebbles, and then the sand, and then the water. In the same way, we need to put first things first. God first, our family and health, then our career, then our goals and aspirations, then leisure, all in the right order. We all need systems for maximum efficiency in our daily lives. A system is a set of principles or procedures according to which something is done. Our system is our modus operandi, it's the way we do things. We all have systems, either deliberately created or created by default. Perhaps you're thinking, I don't really have systems or I just go with the flow, I don't need systems. The fact is you do have systems. Your system might be to start the day with meditation or prayer, or it might be to check your phone, for messages or switch on your TV and watch the breaking news in the morning. It might be handling emergencies or prioritizing your schedule. Whichever way you do it, that's a system. You have systems by intent or by default. Your systems will either work for you or work against you, but either way you have them. And the systems you have are a result of what you've created 
or what you've tolerated. So if you want a better outcome, start by creating a better system. In the first chapter of the Bible, for example, the world was formless and God said, let there be light. Then he went on to separate the day from the night, the earth from the sky, the land from the water, the birds from the fish, and so on. You might notice that God handles specific systems together and doesn't move on until he thinks it's good. Finally, God created humans and gave them directions for caring for it all, including a system of resting once a week. Isn't that awesome? Your body consists of a system of organs. Your life is full of systems. Healthy systems never happen by accident. They were created on purpose. So what system do you need to create to get the results you want? Always ask yourself, what can I do to make myself ready today? Always be ready because opportunity will come. It will always come. So prepare, prepare by saving, prepare by reading, prepare by developing yourself. Prepare yourself for a great future. Prepare yourself for great wealth. Life does not waste success on the unprepared. Prepare yourself always, then you will deserve success. Life gives you not what you want, but what you deserve. Opportunity passes the unprepared by. And it is painful to be unprepared when opportunity comes. So be prepared. According to the Bible, God is a meticulous planner. For example, he scheduled a banquet called the marriage supper of the Lamb 2,000 years in advance. Wow! He instructed Noah to build an ark with a specific kind of wood, gopher wood, specific dimensions, 450 feet long, 75 feet wide, 45 feet high. He gave Moses the specific colors, blue, purple, scarlet, and the specific kind of fabrics, linen, and designed embroidered cherubims and he, that he wanted used in constructing and furnishing the tabernacle. Look at how precisely he orders the seasons and positions the stars. Can you imagine such a God having no plan for you, his living temple, and your finances, the product of your work life? He certainly does, and he says so. So learning to prioritize can help us with planning and organizing our lives better. Because if the first thing isn't first, everything else is out of order. And the greatest priority in a person's life should always be, in my opinion, their relationship with their Creator, their relationship with God. The wisdom of Proverbs indicates that if God is at the top, everything else will fall into place. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. I have put this promise to test in my life and I, I can vouch for its reliability. God always keeps his word. He will, we will fail sometimes but he never fails. Only a few things matter, my brother and my sister. So say no to more things so you can be more effective and successful in the few things that matter. Order is knowing that what you do, your input, will lead to a predictable outcome. Planning brings order into our lives. Henry Ford once said, before everything else, getting ready is the secret to success. And in conclusion, remember, order, planning, preparation brings an overflow into our lives. It brings increase. It's the mess and the chaos that brings stress. Until next time, Keep on growing in wisdom and maturity. Blow the cup of your capability. Be unstoppable. Be awesome. I'm cheering you on.